Patrick Beatty reviews the number one for news. It's Patrick Beatty reviews number one for news. Yeah. Tune in. Get up. Yeah. What's up? Keep the change, you filthy animal. What is up, my gaggle of geeks? I am here to talk about Vivo, and I, with me is Christian over at Film Optics. Thank you so much for joining me, and we've got a lot to talk about with this Netflix Sony animated film. How's it going, man? I'm doing good, man. It's it's a Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. The oh, best day of the are week. Are you getting tacos? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, wish. I, I wish. set it up. I set it up. You knock it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I wish I was, but thank you so much for having me on. Um, yeah, this, this is great, great of honor. Course. It's sorry if I, I seem a little tired. This has been a long day at work, but you no know, worries, I'm, man. I'm here to entertain. Well, the last time <laughs> last time we saw each other virtually was doing a Jungle Cruise review, which you've done your you've done your third review, that, I think, that week of it with us, to, and we were the last one. So hopefully, I caught you before. How many reviews have you done at Vivo so far? None. Not yet. Yes. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I'll never nice. do Space Jam ever again. New, like, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. It was the Jungle Cruise. It was Space Jam. Yep. Totally. Yeah. Yep. Oh man. <laughs> Well, I, film man, optics. <laughs> tell tell uh, my 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 following a little more about film optics and where they can follow you for all that stuff. Oh yeah, so film optics. You know, it, it is a podcast for film critics and non critics and friends. Of course, uh, we give everyone an optical vision on everything that's happening in Hollywood with movies and TV shows. And we do a little bit of um, we do a lot of news segments as well. Just not as of late. It's just been kind of crazy with there's just so much to talk about it's yeah. very very difficult to kind of like shoehorn all that in but you can follow us over at film optics that is optics with an x over on twitter and instagram for all of our latest announcements and yeah that's that's pretty much it we're getting ready for suicide squad so that's gonna be a lot of fun yep. we covered uh jungle cruise did like a double feature review of jungle cruise and the green knights uh, only one podcast all under an <laughs> uh, under an hour that was my that was my goal and i did it very so, nice well, very if that was your goal i'm i'm happy that you accomplished <laughs> that and i i gotta ask i'm gonna blur i'm gonna bleep this part out but what was the what was the segue between emily blunt and Dwayne are, are great to I don't know. <laughs> With the Green Knight. How did you transition from, from one movie to oh, another? Did, did just... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was oh, like, God. Oh, so, yeah. So, me and Devin, uh, my co host, we covered, uh, we did Jungle Cruise first because I feel like a lot more people are going to be watching that. And then I just kind of went into like a short break and then I kind of just uh, added yeah, a You got to take a break yeah. before you can jump into the next one. Well, yeah. Well, me <laughs> nice. and Leo from Geekly Goods, we covered Green Knight. So it was kind of like a two for type thing. So Devin didn't join us for Green Knight. Um, I don't think he would really like it, but he said he's going to watch it. So I'm like, at your own risk, I don't think you're going to like it, but I'm glad that you're taking a risk to, to go see it. <laughs> oh, I'd be interested in hearing what he said. And you can catch me over at Film Optics as well, hopefully in the future. But please go follow them right now. And let's jump into Vivo. So this is a Sony Pictures animation. Uh, it's the first ever musical adventure featuring all new songs from Lin-Manuel Miranda. It's going to be taking audiences on an epic adventure to gorgeous and vibrant <laughs> locations and never before seen animation. I'm not reading off of anything. Oh, um, I always do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But the, 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 the bits of it is basically this. Uh, uh, what is the, the name of the, the type of monkey he is? Uh, he's a honey. He, he's a kinkachu. Uh, a honey kinkachu. bear. Yep. Yeah. Like so this, kinkachu. <laughs> I, that's that's how you need to remember it honestly it, it looks kind of similar too they've got weird yellow fur with them but uh he he's was adopted from when he was a young uh little uh kikachu and brought into a music uh family with with this older man that's a musician and now he's tasked with a with a quest of sorts to travel to deliver a love song to someone that uh, his his guardian had a connection with and in hopes to be able to, to accomplish that, he's re recruiting some help from uh, other family members. And there's hijinks. It's Lin Manuel. There's musical, and it, it's it's the first Lin Manuel musical in a kids setting. I want to know what your thoughts were going into this, and then what your thoughts were when you saw it. When I first saw it, I, I honestly, and I say this a lot, but like I I, I didn't know what to expect. But I, I really didn't know. I didn't know what it was about. I just knew that Lin Manuel Miranda was attached to the project and that immediately just 
have me invested because I will watch anything that he's attached to project wise, like 100%. Mm-hmm. And watching it, I, and you know, without getting into spoilers, of course, uh, watching it, it, it really, it, it, it was, it was heartbreaking, but it, it's, it really told a, an important message of, you know, when it comes to love and, you know, those you care about and how important it is to tell people how much you mean to them mm. while they're still alive and, you know, giving people, not giving people their flowers, you know, when they've passed on and things of that nature. I, I thought it was beautiful. The, uh, the, the songs were just like so, so infectious mm-hmm. and, you know, like it is a kid's movie it does kind of fall into those cliches. There are parts where you can definitely guess like, oh, you know, this is going to happen here, blah, 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 blah. But like overall, I thought it was just really well executed because it's all about that message. And I I, I teared up a bit. I'm not going to lie. I, I cried a little bit there. It was it was a beautiful, beautiful message. Absolutely. And you, you touched on some really good points with with the flower and 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 really telling people how you feel in in the time that you're able to when when you're able to have that connection with them and connecting with people. That's really what the, the film is about and, and presented through music. Um, I, I think that Lynn manuel did a, a really good job with this. Um, it's interesting that Sony Pictures and, and Netflix have this deal where they keep passing over the, their animated stuff. And they had Mitchell versus the machines being sent over and now they have this. Um, it, it seems like this probably happened during the time when Hamilton was really big and he was getting signed on to multiple projects. So, mm. and, but I have to say, as far as the emotional weight, like first 10 minutes and I, I can only really compare it to up because it does put you on such a quick emotional roller coaster. This mm. one is rough. Like. I was thinking, like, for some kids, like, I don't know if they're going to crawl out of this hole that they put them in. Because once they, <laughs> once you're dropped in it, and again, no spoilers, but it's pretty, it's pretty rough. And they, they do, like, it goes into way more positivity and beautiful, beautiful mm. story and music. But that one part is like, yeah, okay, let's keep going. All I have to say is, if we can survive Mufasa's death, we can survive anything. <laughs> That's, oh, man. We, we, <laughs> back in my day, we had our lions. <laughs> Die like brave. We had our bambies. <laughs> yeah. Our bambies' moms died, and we didn't cry. <laughs> oh man! But yeah, I. I and you do bring, bring a really good point. Like when it comes, to, like there, there's always like a lot of heavy like themes when it comes to kids' movies, and it's like they're always just so dang sad, but they're so good. And mm-hmm. you mentioned it to up. I was kind of like I, I can see up for sure. I can also see a little bit of Coco as well. Oh, totally. Because I like, oh, I love Coco so much. <laughs> nice. Beautiful, beautiful film. But yeah, it's it's one of those films where you can, it's, it is teaching kids a important message at a younger age, even with like Inside Out. Like there's, there's just so many heavy themes when it gets like okay yeah like it's a kiss movie but like now it's time to get serious and it's like oh my god and like you know that's usually when the parents can jump in and some kids may pick it up you know some kids may not but it's always those movies that you kind of go back to i I can see a lot of kids returning to this watching it over and over one of my co-workers i mentioned Mitchell's versus the machine to them before i came out I'm like yeah you know it's coming out like this day whatever whatever now he hates me for it because that's all these kids <laughs> watch. And he's like, yeah. you brought this into my home. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Don't like, tell him about sorry. this. Some of the, there is one song in particular that if it gets into a household, I pity them. It oh, happens. I've, I've it's the kid. To it it's the kid song. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. Yeah. You're listening to it. Not, oh, no. <laughs> it's on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're willingly listening to that one? Oh, that one to me felt like for kids, and my head was gonna. There's explode. a lot of them out there. Um, <laughs> I, I just it's when Lin Manuel Miranda comes in to compose music, like I'm just it's just so, so catchy. True. Every single song, it's just mm. like wow, this is great. And sometimes you just never really. I, I'm I used to be the person who never really listened to like soundtracks of movies, like mm. maybe back in like college. But it's like as of late, I've just been getting into it and i don't know why like i've been listening to the two dune tracks that are on spotify like on non-stop i'm like this is just pumping me up like let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome i've been listening to the pig soundtrack a ton i haven't seen that movie yet oh dude what 
I know. We got to have you back on to talk about Pay Dude. <laughs> oh, I would love to know what you thought after you see that. And, and you know, Twitter probably has already given you opinions on it. Just just ignore those. <laughs> go in there. Go in there looking for some pig stuff. And, you know, exactly. like, I don't know. But let, let's talk a little bit about the, the supporting cast. Because we have Lynn manuel as Vivo. But we also have a pretty stacked cast as far as talent goes. We've got Zoe Saldana as Rosa. Uh, Michael Rooker is in this a little bit. Brian Tyree Henry. Nicole Breyer. Gloria Estevan. Uh, this is a pretty good cast. And, and as far as them being able to have like musically oriented stuff, they're singing in this. They're also um, honestly voice acting is, is its own kind of physicality, too. So they are physically doing stuff in those sound booths. Uh, what did you think of the supporting cast? Did you have any that stood out to you? Um, Man, I guess it would have been from the supporting cast. I guess it would have been Zoe Saldana. She played the mother, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was just, uh, she just gave these huge, just like mom vibes where it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> if I if I close my eyes, it's like my mom is here. You know, like she <laughs> wants nothing but, you know, the best for her daughter. And, you know, she's overprotective as any, you know, good mother would be. And it, it was just like she she played more so in the background because she wasn't like more so in the forefront. But I do feel like it, it like anytime there's like a good mom on screen, I'm like, I like that person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. Um, yeah. And let's see who else. Man, oh, man, because the um, the uh, the Girl Scouts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The let's I see think if they I were find more about. I, I'm not them. sure who who voiced them, but I really I didn't see enjoy their journey. three three <laughs> younger actresses in a row. So I'm going to assume it's these. So I, I'm so yeah. sorry if we get them wrong. But Katie Lowe's, Olivia Trujillo, and Lydia Jewett. Yeah, it was because I, I was a I was in Boy Scouts uh, growing up, and um, I mean we never really I never really knew anyone who was in Girl Scouts myself, but I did see them around town growing mm -hmm. up, and it was just. I don't know something about like the Girl Scout mentality when it comes to that. They're just very, they know what they want. You know, they're here to sell cookies. They're here to, you know, do the right thing and make sure everything is like prim and proper. Mm -hmm. And I really, Vaccinate I just, that I, monkey. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they were just, they were on their a game and they were, you know, they, but like, you know, it's kind of like the judgmental thing is like, Oh, well, you know, if you want to be a Girl Scout, blah, 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 blah. I think they were called sand dollars or something on the film. Mm -hmm. like that so i was like okay that, that's a nice little you know nod towards that instead of them actually being girl scouts but it's like they're tough they're relentless and oh no for sure <laughs> i love the scene where where a certain thing happens with a car and yeah. they they rebuke the person about yeah. just driving like only two blocks to get to a destination and how bad that is for the I, it was amazing and really it's like that was that was money as far as that's exactly what they're like oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Gloria Estevan, uh, the, for the small part that she was in, it, it was very impactful when you get to this character mm -hmm. and and absolutely measured up for me and, and made the ending so much more impactful. The ending oh, to yeah. this film really packs a good punch. I think it might be just the middle part for me that tends to waver a bit. Once they get into the jungle, it it's there. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of good uh, good like numbers and things. However, there there's not a lot. I guess it's like very like substantial like character building things between yeah. the two leads that we have. It's a lot more they split off and then they go and reconnect, you know. But mm. I, I that doesn't that's not to say that it's still not like good character progress for both sides. I just wish there was maybe a little bit more interaction with the two of them. Yeah, yeah, I I would agree with you there. The jungle part, like it was it was fun, but it was a bit all over the place. Yeah, and I think between that—that's the one for the for me with ADHD as a kid, like the one that can't <laughs> concentrate, and it's like, oh, okay, we're here, we're there, we're go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and the other side characters, you know, uh, with well, I, I don't mention who they are, but uh, I I thought they did a pretty good job, especially the uh, the uh, the other uh, two lovers as mm. well. <laughs> oh yeah, was, their music, their songs were great. Yeah, I love that. Yep, it was it was <laughs> hilarious, and it's like, oh, you know, it it, it is a you know, it's it's a story about love and just and you know, there's different there's different versions of love. You know, you have love the love love of the mother with the with the daughter, and then you know, with the daughter and you know everyone else who she kind of comes across, and it's just love it the really, father with the daughter. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially, yeah, especially with the father. And it's like people don't realize how important it is to tell someone just like, you know, on a random day, like how much you appreciate them. Because like mm-hmm. you said, you know, you never know what could happen and you don't want to regret that for the rest of your life. No, absolutely. I think that this has so many like deep themes like that. Yet when you're watching it, it it's so, uh, I guess, connectable for somebody. There, there's there's a real like reachability for for anyone that's at any age to be able to kind of get these themes that are maybe a little bit more adult, maybe a little more harder to understand, but that they mm. introduce in ways that work really well. Uh, I want to ask, what would you say is your is your favorite uh, animated film that's come out this year? That is a very tough question because Sony Animation has been doing such a great job between, like we said, with Vivo and Mitchell's uh, versus the Machine. Um, and I know for all my uh, my weeb friends out there, all the Japanese uh, lovers of anime, there is the <laughs> Demon Slayer movie uh, Mugen Train. Um, I would probably say I think I enjoyed Mitchell's versus Machines. Mm a little bit better just because i you know i i work in it and all of the jokes really just hit for me but i am a huge huge music lover as well so i feel a little bit torn but i think i'm gonna give it two missiles versus the machine thus far just because i think i enjoyed it just a little bit better but man oh man the music in this film is just so it's 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 like i said it's it's infectious like i mm-hmm. could you know there's there's songs out there right now on spotify um you know throughout the movie and i can definitely see especially one of them uh being a, a oscar contender oh really 100 like percent. oh yeah. nice i, I want to hear what that song is after this for sure <laughs> I know, actually you know what why i don't care if we spoil it which song is it uh keep keep the beat with um with when 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 they're in the jungle and they're kind oh of, yeah okay yeah, I yeah, got yeah, it yeah, yeah. that was yeah, a fun yeah. one is that the first one when they're in there um I think this yeah first one okay it, I believe so I believe it, before everything else happened yeah gotcha yeah, you know it's, I, you're, it's you're so not gonna good. get an argument from me on Mitchell versus the machines either <laughs> Christian it's hard holy crap it's but so like, good Raya the Last Dragon is so good too and it's Raya like is great I feel like we haven't gotten that many animated films this year. I you know, like there, there's a lot of like independent ones that were coming out during film festivals. Mm-hmm. Like there's I know there's one. I think it's called Flea, but I'm not entirely sure that was on. Okay, that was on Sundance. It was like eight minutes long. It was, a, it was a really short one. And like Crypto Zoo, which I don't know what that was. And I don't know why we all gave it high ratings. I didn't. It was weird. <laughs> it, was, it, it was the whole thing was whack. Yeah. But <laughs> but yeah, this is definitely like pro- this uh, Vivo will probably be number two for sure, just because it is like mm-hmm. the, the message that it sends. And then. Uh, Raya, because I really, really enjoyed Raya. Like that was, I did not expect that from Disney at all. So that was good yeah. stuff. Well, let me ask yeah. you then. Uh, oh, well, I like I was saying, Mitchell versus Machines. Mm. I just wanted to copy your list. Honestly, it's it's oh, exact yeah. same as mine. <laughs> like there's no there's no difference between the two. I think Raya, Raya, I feel deserves a second watch from me because mm. I've seen Mitchell versus Machines a couple times so far. Um, this, uh, I've seen, I've seen kind of one and a half. I started it at night and then the next morning I was like, let's just start from the beginning and keep going. Cause I don't know. <laughs> at, the, at the end of the twice. day, I'm always like, let's just keep going. And then I, I, I eat chili and then I get sad and I uh, fall asleep. And, yeah. It's, it's a nightmare, but what would, what would be your rating for this? So, um, I did have to, I've seen this movie twice. The first time around, I was like five stars, 100% on, on, on Rotten, I'm not Rotten Tomatoes, excuse me. I'm not a Rotten Tomatoes critic on Letterbox. Hey, right now, you're better than Rotten Tomatoes critic. <laughs> Screw them. But hey, 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 don't, don't, we, we love, we love Rotten Tomatoes. Both of us love Rotten Tomatoes. We I mean, yeah, you know, like my application is sitting it. there, so. And, and that application so good. And so is mine. Maybe you could take a look at it. Rotten Tomatoes. We, we didn't mean that. All right, we're back. <laughs> um <laughs> I I would give this like like letterbox scoring, I would give it four out of five stars because mm. you know I do recognize that there are issues with it. That even though as much as I do love it, like it's really hard. Like sometimes I'm like 
I'm like, oh my god, like I love that film. Five out of five stars. And I have to like, yeah, yeah. okay, let's let's reel it back. Let's let's watch it again to see it's like tough to stand. is it Lord stand of the Rings? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. was talking to my friend about it. He's like, is it Lord of the Rings good? I was like, oh no, not no 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 no. <laughs> and then he's like, okay, so yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, isn't I, that I kind see of the weird thing with ratings? <laughs> like, I've always been of the mindset that you rate based on your genre. And you're not necessarily rating mm. based on like, let's compare it to the top movie of all time every time. But it's like yeah. for an animated film, where is this? Or like for yeah. uh, it's tough with drama because like you can kind of call anything like a movie can't be Anything's a movie without true. drama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. Everything's a drama. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I think I'd agree with you. I would go 3.5 just because I do think there's one song. I know I know that Lynn yeah, manuel can do no wrong, but there's <laughs> one song where the minute it played, I looked at my I looked at my wife and I was like, I'm so sorry. Cause she was working and she just gave me the she shot me this look like what it was like I put on Gundam style and turned it to eleven. And then I turned on, know, and then I turned on Baby Shark about. on another speaker, yeah. and turned that up to eleven, <laughs> and then turned up something else like three different songs at the same time. I was like, "This is crazy high octane fuel," and yeah, I don't know if it, I can it was process crazy. this. Crazy, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. I don't know what it was. I was like, "I'm just, I'm just feeling it." Like I'm a huge, mm. huge music lover, but and you know, there's a lot of people out there who say like Lin Manuel can't really sing. I'm like, "Well, no, he can sing." Oh, he can. He, sing. Knows... he actually sings this best in this, and I think yeah. he does in Hamilton or, Hamilton, or in the yeah. Heights. Yeah, he's like, got the time. He, he can stand. He, can he doesn't really have to run around. Carry the tune. He can really carry a tune. He really can. And it's like he may not, you know, be Beyonce or Ariana Grande, but like the dude knows how to sing. Like he knows how to carry himself throughout a song, and like he mm -hmm. he knows how to make it work. You know, everyone has a different voice, and he knows how to use his voice well. And you yeah. know, and what he and what he does. So. You know, we're, we're not looking for the second Ed Sheeran over here or anything like that. <laughs> no, and you know but, what? We don't want him in yesterday, the sequel. So if you end up doing the sequel, <laughs> like, keep him the F out. You ruined a perfect movie, Ed. Um, I would probably give it a 3.5 out of 5. And, mm. and, and yeah, what would you say you want to see moving forward with the great Lin-Manuel Miranda? Because he's kind of doing no wrong with anything. Can he, yeah. can he move into a horror musical? Is a horror musical? He Is the human centipede do a Hamilton <laughs> treatment? What do we need? <laughs> you know what? The Washington football team really needs to change themselves to the Washington Hamiltons. <laughs> there you I think go. that should be a nice homage, but... Uh, he does have, you know, El Canto coming up uh, later this year with Disney. Mm. And, yeah, he's, like, all over the place. And I believe he does have a... The Bohemia one, too, with Andrew Garfield. Tick, yeah. It, tick, tick, it's boom. Tick, tick, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Honestly, man, oh, man. I, I like, if, if, if him going into horror, that would be... It would be odd, but it's, like, I kind of want to see what that looks like. That would be really, really interesting. But I don't know, even if it's him like adapting like another Broadway musical, you know, for, um, for more like, I guess, edited more for Hollywood, like in the Heights or, you know, a lot of people have been asking for a quote unquote movie version of Hamilton, even though I, I follow a minority when I say this, I, I firmly believe that the Disney plus version of Hamilton is considered a movie because they did they took three different performances, edited mm -hmm. them together? You know, there's, there's so choices. many different. Yeah, like, and it it was made for streaming. Like that is not mm -hmm. something you can find anywhere else but on Disney Plus. You know, the top down shots is like I'm pretty sure people weren't sitting in the balcony. You know, sitting there like, oh my god, this is really great. Like whatever, yeah. whatever. But that that's just my take on it. But yeah, I oh, I would love to see. I mean, I know he's more of a Broadway person, but it does seem he's getting more into like the Hollywood, um, more of the Hollywood scene. I'm like, I'm fine with it. You know, if, if it's something that he wants to do, as long as it's not something where it's like, well, you know, like, you know, your, your Broadway time's kind of up. It's time to move over to, mm. you know, the big guy, like the Hollywood gang or whatever. But honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm down for whatever he he puts out. I will be there day one. <laughs> I, I say we pitch we pitch this idea to him, right? We're gonna tweet him right after this. Jack the Ripper, the musical. <laughs> Hold on, hear me out. Hear me out. Musical. <laughs> <laughs> first first lines to the rap, and this is so white. Ready. I'm Jack the Ripper, but you probably never see my face. And then that's, and then I'll just go into the next lines. Oh my God. Millions of dollars. 
Oh yeah, that'll be fantastic. He's I, gonna I, make I was... sure that I never see another film of his again after this. <laughs> if he, if anyone sees this, <laughs> multi-year deal right there. Just just right. pack it on up, send it over to Disney. We're, Look out and see you. Long all. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, Look man. out, Star Wars. <laughs> right. Well, hey, Christian, thank you so much for coming on and talking to me about this. Uh, please tell. I've already we've already been plugging your stuff, but what's the newest episode? What are you guys working on next? And um, where else can we find you? Oh, yeah. So again, thank you so much for having me on. It's been an honor. Was, this was a great, great conversation about one of my favorite animated movies of, of the year. And it's, there's just so much coming out. We're only halfway through. It's August. And mm -hmm. it's like, totally. oh, there's so much coming <laughs> out. And I'm kind of afraid because I'm like, I don't want to give everything five stars. I know I'm going to do it, but no, it's all right. But uh, yeah, so you can also find me over at on my personal Twitter at Music City Nerd. That's usually where I push all of our film optics content even though we have film optics, optics twitter it's weird but you know <laughs> it is what it is but like i uh, mentioned before our latest review is we have our double feature review of um my gosh jungle cruise and the green knights out um that's on podcast pl platforms around the internet and coming up we have our suicide squad review that will probably drop on monday august 9th and me and leo over from geekly goods um we're going to give our first thoughts about titans dc titans season three that will be oh, dropping nice. on august 12th um alongside the first three episodes that drop on hbo max as well dude that that is <laughs> that alone everyone just go for that tease alone is worth it thank you again so much you can always check our stuff out at patrickbaderviews.com and the gaggle geek show every friday where we'll probably be covering suicide squad this friday and uh whatever whatever other weird things we end up doing so <laughs> stay tuned for that thank you again so much as always for watching and we will see you at the next review